Welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. And today, uh, based on a handful of comments, I'm going to go over some more basics of the edit page. This should uh, help some people get some tips and tricks and shortcuts on using the edit page. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Now, if you've been playing around with Resolve for any amount of time, you, you probably realize that there's a whole lot of things that you can do in the edit page. And it would be a class into and of itself for probably two days to go through everything that you can do in the edit page. So I always try and uh, do things to try and just get you started and get you moving along. But there's some things I'm going to go over today that are should help you get uh, up and running even faster so first off I'm gonna I'm actually gonna get rid of some of this footage here one thing when I'm, I'm gonna bring up the media pool this is gonna look like how I would be editing as I'm cranking along getting my edits put together and I open up a different piece of footage I'm not gonna do anything crazy here I'm hitting I for my endpoint O for my out point and I want to quickly add that to the end of my timeline well, by the default, the key is Shift F12, and it will append it to the end of the timeline. Now, for me, it's not just Shift F12, it's Shift Function F12 because I'm on a MacBook Pro with a touch bar. So what I do is I make this a little easier, and I'm going to go to my keyboard customizations, and... Now, I've already got mine set here, so I'm just going to select my keyboards and show all. I'm going to type in append, oops, under all commands, append, and I have append to end of timeline. Now, if I set this to the default DaVinci Resolve, it shows it's Shift F12. If I click on that and hit Command E, it's going to tell me that it's already assigned to file export. Do I want to assign this keystroke? And I can just say yes assign it and then when I'm done so it shows that it's edited up here I can then go and save as a new preset so I have append and let's also find insert ins uh, insert right there insert uh, selected sub or clips into timeline. I can add that if I want to. So I have shift uh, command I for myself. So you choose keys that are going to work for you. And I'm just going to switch back to, whoops, no, no, uh, select back to my custom one because I have a handful of other ones. I'm going to discard those savings and uh, get out. So when I'm in here, uh, like I said, if I want to do just an append, I just hit Command E. If I've got the cursor where I want it, and notice my playhead is in between two clips, and I can just hit the insert key. So again, on mine, I set it up for it's just Command I because I didn't need that import command set up on Command I. I get, use whatever you like. If you like a certain key for that, use it. You don't need to because I could just come over, drag this clip over here and select insert. I just prefer keyboard shortcuts whenever I can just to try and save some time. Okay, that's keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Some navigation things that will help you out. I like you can go right and left arrow keys and that's going to move the playhead forward and back one frame. So ease of use there if we're zoomed in here a little bit more, a little more clear. If I'm trying to find right where, you know, a cut is, I can just get right to it. The plot, the up and down arrows will take you to the beginning or end of the next clip. So it'll just take you to the next clip. So I use that a lot for some quick navigation. Another tool that I use is called Nudge. This will take one clip and just move it one frame right or one frame left. And that's the plus and comma keys. So easy to just move things around at one frame 
at a time. Again, there's tons of keys for doing things. Uh, one day we'll take a look at using JKNL editing, um, things like that. Talking about JKNL, that will adjust your play speed. So if I'm playing and I want to go faster, I can just hit the L key. And the more I hit it, the faster it's going to go. So it can get going pretty damn fast. <laughs> That's too fast. And K or J will go in the opposite direction. So J will play back. And the more times you hit it, the faster it will go. K will stop it. So you think of J and L as your left, right. And if it's going, you want to stop, hit the K key. So those are my favorite keyboard shortcuts for working in the edit page. Now let's get to some of the tools here. Normally you're going to start off in this kind of arrow modes, which is selection mode. So if I grab the end of something and move it, it's just going to move the edges in. I try and work mostly in trim edit mode. So now uh, let me go back to selection mode on this page, on this clip. If I pull this in, it leaves a gap between the two. And if I don't, if this is only a one frame gap, it's entirely possible that, let me go one frame. If I don't see it, cause I'm zoomed out, I'll get that one frame flash right there. So when I'm in trim edit mode and I make this adjustment, it pulls everything along with it. So this is much easier for me to make sure I don't get those gaps. If I go to the right to add more footage from that clip, you see it adds it while moving everything over to the other side. I can do the same thing on the left side of it. So trim edit is a very, very good tool. And if I'm in this and I want to kind of change the footage that's in this, that's kind of easy too. I just move the mouse cursor into the middle of it and I can drag left and right to adjust where in that clip this particular selection resides. So another cool feature there. I'm going to skip the dynamic trim mode tool. Uh, that's a little more complicated. I don't want you to worry about that. The blade tool is simply that it allows me to cut and splice one particular spot. Then you have shortcuts for insert, overwrite, and replace. So I don't use overwrite and replace very often. So you can see that's F11 and F10, but you can see on insert, I'm command I. So I do use that one quite a bit. Next, we'll go to the snapping tool. And if this is turned off, I'll turn it off there. There's no snapping. If I move this clip right over the other one, it's just going to overwrite it. If I turn that on, it's going to stop and I have to push it onto there. If I have my playhead somewhere, it will stop at the playhead and then I can push it some more. If I have, let's say I have a marker somewhere and I'm trying to get things lined up. Boom. It'll, well, let me move the playhead. It will stop at that marker. So the snapping tool is fantastic for getting things lined up without overwriting and making sure that you don't have any gaps in there. Okay. The next tool is this linked selection. So I'm going to have to bring in a piece of footage so I can explain this. Uh, I'm going to move these, these two pieces over and I'm going to go to my, uh, I got to go to turn on my power bins. And I'm going to bring in my, uh, my Lightroom intro. There we go. And we close the media pool. So we have some more room to work here. So if we look at this piece of footage here, as it plays, the video goes out, but the music continues and it will take all the way up to about this point for it to, and I can still hear it right about there. 
So what I want effect effect wise is I want that music to keep fading out while my footage is playing. And to do that, well, I have to trim off this black spot or the black ending from my logo. Well, if I just take and try and drag it, it drags the audio with it. If I'm in trim mode, same thing. It's just not, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. So the other option would be to right click, say link clips, unselect it, not only select that, then drag it over. And, and this works. I mean, this, this certainly is an option for that because the end result is going to be what I want. But I'm going to show you an easier way of doing that. So I'm going to link these two back together again. So these act as a single, well, not with this guy. Oops. Uh, had the wrong thing selected. There we go. Link these two back up. Now, by default, linked selection is on. So if I move that, they move together, right? If I turn this off, now I'm not adjusting them together. So they're still linked. And when I move them offset, it will tell me what that offset is. But for my purposes, I just want to trim off the black sec section of this playback. There it is. I drag it over. I can turn that back on and then move my footage back into place. So think of it as a way of temporarily unlinking pieces of footage together. Because now that I have that turned back off, and I try and adjust my pieces, they continue to be linked. So it just allows a very simple, uh, well, I have them both selected there. Now I can move them individually. If I put that back and now try and grab it, they're back linked together. So it's a temporary unlinking of an audio and video file. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, Another couple of quick things to talk about. I want to talk about the timeline view options. We have stacked timelines. I'm not going to go into that, but I will link up above to a video about stacked timelines so you can see more about that. The next option here is subtitles. Again, we haven't done anything on subtitles. I'm not adding subtitles, so we're not going to look about that. And the third one is audio waveforms. So if I turn that off, you can see I don't see my waveforms, which sometimes is okay. But like in the case of this particular video, um, I need to know where those audio waveframes are so I know where to put my video so it's part of this downbeat. Then you have your track height. And there's a couple options here for clip view. So you can get the start and ending thumbnail. You can compress it all without seeing those if you don't need them. I usually like to work with them completely on. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference. And you can adjust the height and the audio. We'll turn the, the audio waveforms back on. So a couple different time view options. The next thing over here is our zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. Okay. So let's get to a couple other quick things here. Um, let's talk about some fade controls. Now this does a very hard cut from one thing to another. Let's say we wanted to make this a little smoother. So I can grab, if I'm in this view, okay, if I'm in the other views like this one, I don't have those little handles there. So I need to be in one of these other view modes. So I'm going to go back to my regular one, increase the height so we can see things, see what I'm doing here. And these little white handles are fade in and fade out controls. So I'm going to move that like five frames. I'm going to make this one five frames. And now I'm going to actually line those up like so. And now let's see what we have. 
So it was a nicer fade in if I take it to 10 there and 10 frames there. Now let's see. So a much smoother transition than just a hard cut. Now that's just using the fade in and fade out handles. Then there's also a bunch of ways to do things in the effects library with video transitions. And I could simply add a cross dissolve on there and a cross dissolve on there. And let's see what that gives us. Well, not much. Why? Because my machine is a little slow and I'm going to have to actually render that. So I'm going to set my rendering cache to user. Then I'm going to go to my clip, render cache color output, and I'm going to have to do it for this one too and say clip, render cache color output. And that's going to improve the performance of the playback because it's caching the output to disk so it can play it back much faster and smoother. Now, sometimes it's smart enough to know, hey, this is not going to play back smooth, so I'm going to render it. Other times I have to tell it, look, I, I noticed it wasn't playing smooth, so I'm going to force you to render it and we'll go from there. So let's see what all it's doing here. It should render up that piece here in just a moment. There we go. Now when we play it back. So we had a nice smooth uh, transition in and out using the plugins. So that's going to cover it for this video on some basic editing tools to help you get started more with the edit page. Any questions, things that you want to know, be sure and ask in the comments so I can do a video specifically for your concerns. If you don't like this video and you're going to hit the thumbs down, leave a comment and let me know why so that I can improve the videos for you. But if you do like it, hit the like button. If you really like it, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you get notified anytime I put out a new video. So this has been Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.